Good evening, Internet. Welcome back to another night of Strange and Scary Games. Tonight we're going through Paranormal Sites, the seven mysteries of Hanjo. Yes, I got that right. Perfect. Um, we... Where are we? Uh, so we went through Shogo Okie the first time. That was the prologue. Um, we went through Tetsuo Satsumi, who is an investigator, or who, who is a, um, a police officer. We went through Yako Sakazaki, who is a uh, student at the high school. And then we were going through Harue Shigima, uh, who is a mother of a child who was kidnapped and murdered. Um, so we are going to continue on her path. If you haven't seen the other videos, I'll link a playlist in the description, uh, and you can go through them from the start. So I would re really recommend catching up. Uh, Haruo Shigima, nice thought. Summary of previous events. Despite having obtained the curse of the haunting clappers, Haruo Shigima is determined to use the right of resurrection by stealing the remaining curse stones. She instructs her private investigator, Richter, to find the other curse bearers. Haruo Shigima, 1 a.m. Shigima Mansion Reception Room. It's been almost an hour since Richter left. He promised he'd call me if anything happened. But he hasn't. So all I can do is wait and wait. Uh, we saw that. We saw that. We haven't seen this. What's this? A newspaper? It must have fallen off the chair. It's newspaper. I only leave them in here for the guests. I hardly ever read them myself. I don't think I've taken the time to go over one in years, in fact. Well, it's not like I have anything better to do. It looks like the city's biggest problem right now is pollution. I remember how the air and water used to be even more polluted. The river was covered in scum from all the sewage and industrial waste, and it uh, stinks so badly it'd make my eyes water. Eventually, people started getting sick, and it couldn't be ignored anymore. Fortunately, it's gotten better since then. Although the air around the industrial district is still filthy with gas and smog. All sorts of articles about the current state of the economy. Now that the post-war boom has passed its peak, we're moving into the era of large corporations. It's about 220 uh, to 230 yen to the dollar. Manufacturing is on the rise and exports are healthy. The dollar is down from its height and people are saying it could fall further. There's no denying how much the standard of living has improved in the past few years. It's common to own a car and a television now and supermarkets are better stocked than ever. Now that everyone has more spending money to go around, people are coming up with all kinds of new diversions. It seems like only yesterday that people were flocking to the arcades to shoot aliens. But now we have these enormous theme parks and gaming machines that plug straight into our televisions. Everyone's talking about superhero series, foreign films, and movies based on the latest bestseller. Back in my day, fusion rock and folk music was all the rage. But now it's about city pop and idols. I find it hard to care about that sort of thing anymore. Everyone attends high school now, even girls. Universal education policy, they call it. The country's gotten rich enough that every child can go to school. Education is, all, is the backbone of modern society. If you want to work for a good company, you have to get into a good university. With more people in the running than ever, the competition to get into those universities has gotten fierce, though. The new generation is rebelling. Schoolyard violence and delinquency are on the rise. But my boy was too sensible to get mixed up in any of that. I don't want to read anymore. It'll only remind me of him. I don't really watch much television. It feels as if all the information in the world gets passed through that little black box. But Father stopped uh, them from reporting on the kidnapping back when it happened. I was glad about that. Us fuss. Now the comedy boom is taking over. All the comedians are flocking to other genres. The occult seems really popular at the moment. Look at all these paranormal spe uh, specials. I hear the new big thing is some mascot lane of delinquent birds. Mockingbirds, it's called. Was that what Richter was talking about? Trends seem to have such short-lived lives, uh, short shelves lives, short shelf lives now. She sells seashells by the seashore. Short shelf lives now, uh, with how quickly the times are changing. I think I'm just too old to keep up anymore. It's young people who are leading the way with their modern worldviews. My generation will only fall further behind. Although with every flocking to if, uh, although with everyone flocking into the city, land prices are skyrocketing. Nowadays, most people can only dream of home ownership. 
Oof. The city center is going to be nothing but apartments before long. Hmm. I'm not exactly a businesswoman, so this all feels like another world to me. No. Give me. Look at the society. If there's one thing Hanjo never wants for, it's horrific crimes. They found a police officer dead in a local park just the other day. A lot of my family are in the police. I hope it wasn't anybody I knew. I don't read the news anymore, not since last year. It brings back bad memories. Suicide at lo local high school. Oh, I remember that. A high school girl jumped off the roof about a week ago. She was bullied, I think. Or maybe it was something about exam pressure. What? But, no, this can't be right. Her name. Michio Shiraishi from Kamagata High School. It can't be. I'm waiting for Rick to contact me, but he hasn't. I've made sure the receiver's on the hook. It'll ring as soon as he calls. Ah! That must be him. Hello, Shigima residents. Residents. Harue Shigima, 2 a.m. Kamagata Bridge. Richter called me out to meet him, and we came here to Kamagata Bridge. Richter, there's something I need to tell you. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing. We're on Kamagata Bridge over the Sumida River. There's a highway on one side and a freeway on the other, but they're both deserted this late at night. One of the bridges spanning the Sumida River, completed in 1927 as part of the reconstruction effort following the Great Kanto Earthquake. It is notable both for its distinctive blue arches and the cutting edge, for the time, techniques used in its construction. There are many bridges stretching across the Sumida River, each boasting unique structural form and design. The Sumida River. The water is filthy and horrid, but at night, when it's still, uh, when it's still, it looks almost peaceful. Can I ask you something, ma'am? Is the Sumida River what you Honjo folks picture when you think of home? I couldn't say. All I can tell you is that I can hardly stand the sight of it. Right. Should have guessed. This was where they found him after he went missing. All alone, floating in that horrible water. All I can think is how scared he must have been, how cold he must have been. What did he ever do to deserve something so awful? Come here every day since then. And I prayed to the river to give him back, to give me back my son, day after day after day. You know, in olden, you know, in olden times, people believed rivers marked where our world met the next. So the act of crossing flowing river had a huge amount of spiritual significance. Back when Edo was founded, the people of Chuo saw the Sumida River the same way. They associated the far side of the river with the afterlife. That same place would later become Hanjo. All their fear and revulsion accumulated there and took root. But then the Ryo Ryogoku Bridge sprang up after the great fire of Mir uh, Maireki, and just like that, Hanjo was part of the city too. And as it turned from farmland into a town, the people surrounded it with the man-made rivers and crisscrossed it with the canals and the waterways. Weren't those to prevent flooding? That's what I was told. They were, but that's not all they were for. Their other purpose was to contain all the corruption that had built up uh, on the far shore and stop it leaking through to our side of the Great Divide. Officially, they were a physical barrier, but unofficially, they were a spiritual one too. So if I have this right... Are you saying that Hanjo is a place where the real world meets the afterlife? Exactly. That's why the Rite of Resurrection is here, rather than anywhere else. I'm sure of it. It's probably why the seven mem uh, mysteries and their curses have survived to the modern day. And I guess that would make the spot where we're standing now, right over this water, the border between life and death. If there ever was a place where bringing back the dead might be possible, I reckon it's here. It's funny that you mentioned praying to the river. That might have done more than you think. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Just thinking aloud, ma'am. Hmm. Well, that's a nice thought. Uh, Sumida River, a Class A river that is part of the Arakawa River system, which runs through the much of the eastern Tokyo and empties into Tokyo Bay. During the Edo period, Sumida's riverbanks played a key role in the transportation 
the lumber used for construction. In addition to its logistical importance, it was also a place for the common folk to gather, enjoy activities such as seasonal flower viewing or river bathing. And there exist many woodblock prints depicting such activities. The area became plagued with sewage issues when the surrounding environs were industrialized in the post-war period, but the situation has improved since. Many unique bridges span the Sumida River, including the Rio Goku and the Azuma Azuma Bashi Bridge, which attract a large number of visitors and sightseeing spots. Massive fireworks displays in the summer are also uh, always sure to draw a crowd. The river has served as a cornerstone for both the city and its people, having both aided in its development and serving as an inspiring backdrop for countless works of art and literature. Oh, that's right. There's one more memory I have of this river. Do you mind if I tell you? Go ahead. It must have been about 20 years now when I was still a schoolgirl. Back then, the Sumida River was much filthier than it is now. It was full of garbage and industrial discharge. It was scummy and slimy and it stank. Could look out over the water and see dead cats and dogs and pigeons just floating. And one day, among all the filth and garbage, there was a piece of my missing classmate's hand. What? It was almost a miracle when you stop to think about it. What were the chances that someone would find a part of her hand that was still recognizable? And that although everything but the palm had rotted away in the water, the part that was left would have an unidentifiable scar, and that they could tell it had been a murder from the blade marks on the bone. Wait, are you talking about the Nejima murders? So you have heard of it. I'm impressed. I assume you were but uh, I assume you were but an elementary schooler at the time. I wasn't really aware of it then. I only heard about it after the fact. I had no idea the victim was a classmate of yours. Uh, Fumichi, uh, Fumichika Nejima. Uh, the man who made headlines over two decades ago as the perpetrator of the brutal killings known as the Nejima murders. To be honest, it was all a bit of a blur. A wave of chaos just parting around me. Something like that. They said the rest of her body must have sank to the bottom of the river. They combed the riverbed, but they only ever found pieces. Everything else must have rotted and flowed out to sea. Afterward, I heard that all the divers who had been looking for her fell ill. Sorry story for everyone involved, huh? It's funny. Everyone figures the river's filthy already, so one more piece of garbage won't hurt. But every little bit makes it worse. It's a vicious cycle. I know I wouldn't want to go rooting around down there myself. That's right. Which is why the riverbed is the last place anybody would go looking. Or so is the killer's thinking, I suppose. Times were changing quickly back then. Things were confusing. Everyone seemed to be in a hurry. Young people were moving to Tokyo in droves. Some even ran away from home to make it in the big city. And they made easy targets for bad people. A lot of them ended up disappearing without a trace. You see, back then, if you chopped a body up into tiny pieces and threw it in the river, it would rot quickly and discreetly and sink to the bottom, never to be seen again. You saying what I think you're saying? They arrested him shortly after, Fumichika Nijima, the man who killed my classmate and cut her into pieces. He was so methodical about it, it couldn't have been his first crime. And people began to wonder how many other girls he'd murdered the same way. The police never found any evidence of the murders in the end. But the river knows the truth. How many corpses has it swallowed up over the years, I wonder? That same thought spread through everyone's mind and they started avoiding this area. So really, this river has been rank with corruption for decades now. Or at least that's how it seems to me. Well, was that interesting? Well, I can see why you don't have any good memories of this river. With all that darkness lurking beneath the surface, there's no reason that you would. Still, if I may, ma'am, I'm surprised you know so much about the Nejima murders. But how could I not? After all, I was the one who found the hand. The police actually wrote me a thank you letter. They said it was only thanks to me that they managed to bring Nejima to, just to justice. That was the only time my father ever said he was proud of me. Huh. Guess it just wasn't the killer's day. Sometimes I wonder if he resents me for it. The Sumida River. I have nothing but awful memories of it. He's gazing down at the water. There's something I need to tell you. What's up? 
Well, that girl, Michio Shiraishi, the one who was with Shuichi on the day of the kidnapping. That's her. Well, she's dead. She's what? The student who committed suicide last week. That was her. I heard something like that had happened. Never got the name, though. Talk about bad luck. We finally get a lead, only to find it turn into a literal dead end. Unless her death was the whole reason Jon uh, Jono Uchi was so shaken up. He said she was going to curse him. Was he talking about her taking revenge from beyond the grave? It seems like we're back where we started. Not necessarily. The teacher knows something, I'm sure of it. At the very least, I'd put money on him having something to do with Miss uh, Sherry Ishii's death. That's why he's so scared of being cursed by her. I see. And also, something tells me he knows more about your son's kidnapping. In any case, I think I've got a good idea of what he's hiding. Call it a hunch. A hunch? Well, more of a theory. Care to take a guess? Can't say for certain, but... Mr. Jonouchi... Silence Michio Shiraishi... With murder. What if Mr. Jonouchi silenced Michio Shiraishi with murder? What do you think? I see. So you think Mr. Shiraishi's death might not have been a suicide? That would certainly give him a good reason to think she'd hold a grudge, but I'm not sure I buy it. Hmm, that may be a little bit far-fetched. I see. I'm sorry if I disappointed you. I'm not really cut out to play detective. Well, no point in dwelling on speculation. The truth will uh, out in time. Right now, I think we need to have another chat with Mr. Jonoichi. Please, go ahead. All right, then. I've been poking around places connected to the Seven Mysteries, looking for curse bearers, and I think I've found a few candidates. First, a tall man I ran into in Kinshi Bori Park. I asked him for directions, trying to probe him a little, but he turned the questions right back around on me. And he was out of there the second he figured I wasn't what he was looking for. I got the sense curses were nothing new to him. I'm about 40% sure he's a curse bearer. Then there's this middle-aged guy I saw on South uh, Wari Gesui Street. There's no question about this one. He had one of the curse stones in his hand. He had a nervous air about him, too. It was clear he was up to some, some shady business. Gathering soul dregs, I'd bet. He'd make a good target. Next up is a pair, a young man and a woman I saw around the Rio Goku Bridge. This time, the man came up to me and asked me flat out if I was a curse bearer. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about, and he backpedaled and left. Looks like they lurk around there often, look, uh, looking for kindred spirits, would be my guess. Though it didn't seem like they were quite working as a pair. Gathering soul dregs in a group might be a decent idea if you could make it work. But with things how they are, it's got to be hard to find folks one can trust. They've got brass, though. I don't know what their deal is, but I'd like to find out. Last is two detectives I've seen sniffing around. The police were involved. Not necessarily. A body turned up in a local park a few days ago, so they might just be looking into that. Still, the park's got ties to one of the seven mysteries. Might be it was a curse that did the guy in. And if they're sending in detectives from the head office, then something's gotta be up. How do you know where they're from? Well, let's just say that when you're in this business, there are some faces you get to know. Anyway, that's everyone who's caught my eye. You found all of them in so little time? I really did hire the best. It's all in the name, ma'am. Richter Kai P.I. No, wait. Make that Richter Kai Investigator Extraordinaire. My Investigator Extraordinaire. Is that why you can dress like that without drawing attention to yourself? You bet. Investigator Extraordinaire can blend in like a chameleon in any outfit. Well, that aside, the middle-aged man and the young couple sound the most promising, am I right? Whichever we pick, it's, it's still too early to make a move. It seems like the curse bearers are less involved with each other than we thought. Plus, there are still others we don't know about. I say we hang fire and see how things play out. Once more bodies start showing up, that'll get a pot nice and hot. And once it's boiling, our chance will come. Standing around is the last thing I want to be doing right now. This is my only chance to bring back my son. I can't afford to fret it away. Something wrong? Not really. It just struck me. It's been 20 years since the Nejima murders. So it has. Not to spook you or anything, but I thought you might be interested in knowing. Hmm? Life in prison doesn't always mean life. There's a precedent for first-time offenders being allowed out on parole after 20 years. Only if they're found to show remorse and desire to reform themselves, though. That's right. I'm impressed you know so much. Still, it's hard for someone with a criminal record to reintegrate into society. I hear they've been trying to fix that recently, matching inmates with jobs and accommodation. Oh, really? 
They keep an eye on them, of course, and make them report for in for your regular checkups. But to avoid discrimination, they keep the inmates' records a secret from everyone but their employers. They even give particularly nor- notorious cr- criminals new identities so that they won't be recognized in the workplace. My. The way you put it. It's like you're saying Fuma Chika Nejima could be out on parole right now, back in society under a new name, with nobody any the wiser. It's possible. As it happens, little birdie told me about a big name making parole a few, name, uh, a few months back. I don't know if that was Nejima, but our discussion just now did bring it to mind. I see. How unsettling. Now that you mention it, I just remembered something too. What was it? I was passing Kamigata High School a little while ago when I saw someone. He's a janitor. A janitor, I think. And I could have sworn he reminded me of Fumichika Nejima. Oh? He looked a little different after 20 years. Much thinner than I remember, too. I told myself I was just seeing things. But perhaps... Perhaps it was him after all. So, what's next? Big question now is what the rest of the curse bearers are up to. Luckily, the Sumida River is a good distance from any of the sub-mysteries. It's unlikely the other curse bearers will come all the way here. I can finally have a moment to think. I see. All right. Excuse me. Hmm? Where did she come from? It's like she appeared out of nowhere. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm terribly sorry if I've gotten the wrong people, but would you happen to be curse bearers? Curse bearers? What's that then? Mm, it means someone who's gathering souls for the rite of resurrection. You have heard of the rite of resurrection, haven't you? Everybody's talking about it. Caller me intrigued. Care to tell me more? Miss, what's your name again? Oh, silly me. I'm Ayomi Tono. There's more to the rite of resurrection than meets the eye, you see. So the best way is to collect soul dregs. Uh, the best way to collect soul dregs is to kill other curse bearers, and that's about the size of it. I hope it wasn't too much to follow. No, no, I think I got the gist. Funny old world we live in, huh? So, are you saying you're one of these curse bearers? Well, not quite. It's complicated. I'm not, but Utaro is. Utaro, is that your boyfriend? Oh, heavens no, just a friend. His full name is Yutaro Nam- uh, Namigaki. We're, spo- we're, I suppose you could say, partners in crime. Funny way of putting it. So where is Yutaro now? Well, about that, he's not actually a curse bearer anymore. He's more like a former curse bearer. Former? How so? I don't really know the details myself, but apparently he lost his curse stone. Typical, right? He makes such a show of being a top student, only to flunk where it counts. So now I'm out here looking for curse bearers myself. If you want something done right. He lost it? How did he do that? I wasn't with him at the time, so I don't know exactly how it happened. Uh, all I know is that he came back saying he didn't have it anymore. Although, well, it's strange that you probe into that of all things. I'm just the curious sort, that's all. Sorry if it's such a subject. No, oh, I don't mind. I don't particularly care about keeping it a secret. Yutaro can be a little irrational sometimes, so I have to keep a level head on my shoulders. So anyway, mind if I ask why you thought I was a curse bearer? Oh, that. I'm terribly sorry. I was so rude. I saw the two of you out late at night, and I suppose I made assumptions. Gotcha. Sorry if we gave you the wrong idea. Out of interest, what was your plan if we did turn out to be curse bearers? Great question. And the answer is, I was going to ask you very nicely for your curse stones. I, I don't understand the mouths in this game. And you thought we'd give it, uh, we'd have given them to you? Just like that? Well, maybe not. But you know what they say. You never know until you ask. You must really love your boyfriend if you're willing to try something that risky. Oh, goodness, no. We're just friends. My life doesn't revolve around him, you know? Anyway, you aren't curse bearers, so I'm just uh, bothering you, aren't I? Please ignore me. Uh, so what are you trying to do with this rite of resurrection? Well, Utaro has his own plan all laid out. I don't know if I can get behind it, though. It seems... 
How do I put it? Self-centered? I mean, if you've got a chance to resurrect the dead, it would be a waste to, uh, not to use it on someone that really matters, right? So I was planning to steal this cur his curse stone at the last second and use it for myself. Well, until he lost it anyway. Oh, but don't tell Yutaro I was going to do that, okay? I don't think he'd be happy to hear it. Of course, keeping secrets is, in, is my business. My, aren't you dashing? Sounds like you really have your heart set on this right. What were you hoping to use it on? Do you promise you won't laugh? Cross my heart. Well, then let me tell you my master plan. Prepare to be amazed. Ahem. I'm an art student, you see. Woodblock prints are my specialty. Yukio, uh, yukio e in particular. yukio e huh? You must be a cultured lady. Really? Do you think so? Everyone says it's a strange interest for a girl to have. You know, people often think of yukio e as some in inaccessible high-class art form, but that's actually totally untrue. Back in the Edo period, it was the art for the masses, amusement for the common people. So when you think about it, we feel exactly the same thrills from every brushstroke as they did back then. Isn't that fascinating? Huh. Yeah, I guess. And as far as I'm concerned, the undisputed king of Yukioi is the one and only Hokusai. Have you heard of him? Sure I have. He's famous. Didn't he live somewhere around here back in the Edo period? That's right. You're just as knowledgeable as you look. His 36 views of Mount Fuji is so, are so iconic, they're the only works of his most people know. But Hokusai was so much more than just mountains and waves. That's only the teeny tip of the veritable iceberg of work. Gotta admit, I only really know him from those landscapes myself. Oh, don't worry about it. Anyone can learn. When Hokusai died at the age of 90, he left behind over 30,000 drawings. That's multiple drawings a day for 80 years. Amazing, right? And so he kept on drawing right up into his old age, huh? Impressive. But even in his final years, he was never satisfied with his own work. His dying words were, should, have, uh, should heaven afford me five, uh, but five more years, I should finally become a true artist. Even on his deathbed, he still thought he had more to learn. He was already the greatest painter and artist of his era. Who knows what he could have done with more time? Well, that's what I want to find out. Hmm. Hold on, are you saying... Besides, he always said he wanted to move out of 100 houses, but he only made it to 93. Isn't that, uh, that just tragic? Oh no, no. No way this is going where I think it's going. Imagine the masterpieces he could create with modern techniques. I feel all dizzy just thinking about it. You've gotta be kidding me. So if I understand correctly, you wanna use the right of resurrection to... That's right, I wanna bring Hokusai back to life. Well, that's certainly a novel idea. That's what she'd use it on? What a waste. Uh, Katsushika Hokusai. Master Yukioi artist, 1760 to 1849. Hokusai was active during the late Edo period, considered the golden age of Yukioi in Japan. Born in Hanjo, Hokusai spent most of his life in the area, now known as Sumida City. Among his most famous works are the 36 views of Mount Fuji and the Hokusai manga. Uh, Hokusai was a prolific artist from a young age and has left behind a wide variety of works, producing an estimated 30,000 pieces during his lifetime. Though the general popularity of Yukioi declined during the Meiji period, Hokusai remained a core figure at the center of the Jap uh, Japonisme movement, uh, providing inspiration for countless artists around the globe. Despite his fame, Hokusai himself was said to be the, uh, rather indifferent to money or decorum and lived a life that quite appropriately resembled that of, a w of the whimsical and otherworldly scenes often depicted in Yukioi. Uh, though he went by many names in his later years, he took on the title of Gakio Rojin Manji, or the Old Mad Painter. Hokusai lived to be 90 years old and never lost his passion for art. Oh gosh, is that the time I should be going? I need to get my hands on a curse bearer before daybreak. Sorry for flagging you down out of the blue like that. Best of luck. Naomi Tono. Naomi is a young woman working with Yutaro uh, Namigaki. Her love for Katsushika uh, Hokusai's 
Ukiyoe is so great that she wishes to resurrect him with the rite of resurrection. Naomi is a clever but calculating university student who only has time for her own interest. She is making the best of a recent boom in the popularity of female university students, incited by their appearance across TV commercials and radio programs. Naomi is, con is content to ride this trend so long as it allows her to get her hands on whatever she needs and wants in life. Recently, Naomi has figured out that older men will fall for her if she acts a little bit stupid. She was approached by Yutaro Namigaki in town, and although she was not attracted to him, agreed to date him because his family seemed rich. However, she does not think much of him as a human being and is beginning to grow bored of their relationship. Well, there goes trouble. If we're going after curse stones, we should keep an eye on her, too, if we can. Why do you say that? Before she left, she wished us best of luck. She's got at least an inkling that we're curse bearers. My. There's a good chance we'll clash sooner or later. We're after the same thing, after all. You head on back to the mansion, man. I think I'll tailor for a while. Oh, right. Mr. Uh, Jono Uchi was actually looking for you inside the main building. Was that? He's here right now? What's he thinking? I don't know. He was in Class 3B on the second floor just a bit ago. Well, I suppose that means I can't be locking up yet. Second floor, you said. I'll go take a peek. Be back in a jiff. Um, my house is really close by. I'll be fine on my own. Really. That's so. Ah, a snack shop, right? Suppose you'll be fine then. Be careful now, you hear? Stay on the big, well-lit streets. If something happens, shout fire. Okay. You worry too much. Well, we wouldn't want to be losing any more students. Though I imagine you know that better than anyone. Yes, you're right. Yaku Sakazaki, 2 a.m. Kamigata High School, front gates. Mio's late. I've been waiting for 20 or 30 minutes, but there's no sign of her. Huh. There's someone coming down the road. That's... Oh no, a teacher. It's Mr. Ariyashi. Araishi. He looks on edge. I wonder what he's doing. Wait, he's the one who discovered the rite of resurrection. It wouldn't be strange for him to be involved with curses. I wonder if he has a curse stone. What do I do? But it's way past the ten minutes Mio said she'd be here by. I managed to escape. I can't let that go to waste. I need to get out of here before anyone sees me. Yaku Sakazaki, 2 a.m. Yaku's home. Ah, I'm home. Thank goodness. I don't think the walk has ever felt so long. Nobody will be able to use the curse once it's light outside. I need to go look for Mio as soon as it's morning. But for now, I need some rest. Uh, Yako's Friendship. Complete the Yako branch of Chapter 1. No more curses. Harue Shigima. Summary of previous events. Haruwe has received multiple reports about other suspe suspected curse bearers. Although concerned about Ayami Tono, who is apparently also after the curse stones, she entrusts Richter to continue his investigation. Haruwe Shigima, 3 a.m. Shigima Mansion. Back here again. I left Richter to continue looking for curse bearers and came home alone. I can hear the wind rustling in the trees. The old Shigami Mansion. We rebuilt it here after the Great Kanto Earthquake. Uh, it's always stayed the same all these years. Uh, even the war didn't touch it. I never liked it growing up. I always wanted to live somewhere more modern. 
Shigima Residence. Once a warrior clan with a mansion in Honjo, now a dynasty of police officials, the Shigima family is one uh, of considerable repute. The family estate was originally located some distance from the city, but the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923 forced them to rebuild in a new location. The Shigima mansion was at one time a bustling palace where members of the social elite mingled. Uh, one year ago, however, the head of the house was struck with a sudden melancholy, and ever since their mansion has stood as silent as a grave. It's weird that there was a choice there. Uh, after persuading Araishi, the curse bearer of the ever burning lantern, to give up his stone, Satsumi and Aryo have obtained three curse stones in total. They continue their investigation of the town in search of the remaining curse bearers. Tetsuo Satsumi, 4 a.m. Road. Well, with this, we'll have visited every place connected to the Seven Mysteries. This is, last this is the last spot, huh? And we've got nothing to show for it, even though every last location looks suspect from top to bottom. Maybe we, come, uh, maybe we came at the wrong time. There might not have been any curse bearers around. Sounds like we'll need to do another round before morning comes then. Or maybe someone's been observing our movements. What? No way. It's just a thought. Either way, we should check out this last place. Let's hope we finally get a, a lead. Kinshibori Park. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell is this? Is, is he dead? Damn it, we were too late. Was this a curse too? Hang on. I'm going to call this in. I'll leave it to you. I'm going to take a look around. Who killed Shogo? Boss, bad news. What is it? Another mysterious death was reported in the area just now. The medical unit and forensic team are on their way, but it'll be a while before they arrive. Ah, that is bad news. So they got someone else. You think this is the work of a curse bearer? With suspicious deaths popping up one after another, we have to assume it is. Shit, guess we'll be stuck waiting around for a while. Huh? Boss, that phone is ringing. Well, we better go check it out. You're right, but be careful. It could be a curse. Hey, I said we. You expect me to go alone? You're the one who's tough against this stuff. Don't worry, boss. You can do it. Go on now. Damn it. Uh, hello? Kinshibori Park, phone booth. Evening, Detective Satsumi. How are things looking out there? Who is this? <laughs> I finally got him. The real deal. Detective Tetsuo Satsumi himself. Ah, wait. That's Chief Inspector Satsumi now, isn't it? You've come a long way since we last met. I asked you to identify yourself. Man, have you forgotten already, after all the time we spent together? What a time that was. As I recall, I gave you quite the runaround. Wait, is this... Fumachika Nejima? What? Did you say Fumachika Nejima? Like the one from the Nejima murders? Ding, 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 you got it. I had a feeling that the great chief, uh, chief Tsutsumi would remember me. I spent 20 long years in a cell thanks to you. That shit was not easy. Should be thanking me. Should have given you plenty of time to think and atone for your sins. <laughs> that it did. I've repented. My conscience is clean as a whistle. Bullshit. 20 years in prison doesn't even begin to make up for the shit you did. I don't know about that. After all, the justice system was gracious enough to grant me parole. What? This is the real Fu uh, Fumachika Nejima. He must still have a grudge against me for arresting him. So is this payback? Damn it. How do you know where I, want, where I am? <laughs> That's my favorite part. The sound of confusion in your voice. It's to die for. 
Mmm, this is delicious. I can't get enough. I'm not telling you shit. We ha uh, have fun wrecking your tiny little brain for it. Wah! What is your goal? Now, now, you gotta understand. I've repented, seen the lights. I've been a good boy since I was granted parole. I even got myself a job. I've been real serious. Uh, I've been real serious about walking the right path. Well, that's very nice. Keep it up. But it was no good. When the opportunity arose, it was impossible to hold myself back. I knew I had to give you a little token of thanks, or I'd never truly be able to have a fresh start. Do you get what I'm saying? No thanks. I don't need anything. No need to do all that for me. Just try to live a quiet life. Oh, it's no hassle. No hassle at all. It would be all too easy to just kill you, to tear you apart. But that wouldn't be very satisfying. Certainly not after 20 fucking years of waiting. That's a long time to nurture a grudge. You fucking bet it is. I let it gnaw at me, grow inside of me. I thought of nothing else. All of that time I played model prisoner, endured the harassment those asshole guards threw at me. And I did it all for you, Sitsumi. So please just accept my deepest and most sincere feelings. Sorry, but I'm afraid I don't feel the same way about you. Shut the fuck up. That attitude of yours is why I'm saving you for last. What are you planning? Whatever it is, bring it on. I'm not running away. I just told you I'm not coming for you yet. Pay attention when people talk shit, Ed. You see, this time... This time, I want to see you on your knees, weeping in despair, begging me for mercy. Oh no, I'm so sorry, dear Nejima. Please, please forgive me. I won't do it again. Shut the fuck up. This is exactly why I've always hated you so fucking much. It was worth a shot. You really think that would sate me, asshole? You must be crazy. Well then, we're both crazy. We've got so much in common, we should be friends. Enjoy cracking your jokes while you still can. I'm gonna kill everyone you care about, one by one, till there's no one left. Sorry to disappoint, but I'm a lone wolf. I don't have anyone like that in my life. Uh, boss? What about me? Or wait, are you just trying to protect me? There's not a single person you care about? I wonder what your sweet daughter would think if she were to hear that. Don't you fucking dare, I'm warning you. Ooh, very nice. This is more like it. She's living all on her own now, isn't she? Attending university and all. Such a good girl. Oh my, don't tell me that she just happens to live in Hanjo. What? She does? No, forget it. This isn't funny, asshole. I'm gonna find you and make you pay. I love it. Keep going. I want to hear you lose your mind. It's music to my ears. Heh. <laughs> Fuck you. I look forward to chopping up your precious daughter. It'll be just like old times. I won't let that happen. Hmm, I guess I could give you a little hint. Go on. Well, you see... I have the one-sided reed. Satsumi, you have the evergreen beach, no? Nejima. You're a curse bearer? You're using the power of the curse. Indeed, and what a peculiar curse it is. But that's where my hints end. <laughs> God damn it, the curse echo couldn't have fallen into worse hands. Ah, one more thing we should discuss. In fact, it's the most important thing. Thought you were finally going to shut up. I'm already sick of you, so I'll pass. Oh, but you don't want to miss this. It's the main course. I could just go after your daughter, but something tells me you'd get bored. No, I'm good. You got me real fired up. You're in my head. Well done. But this is a gift Taylor made for you. I'm going to kill all the people you swore to protect. Every last person living here. Couldn't. Oh, but with this curse of mine, I can. I'll give you until dusk. By then, I could probably get a couple hundred people or so. And it'll all be your fault. Oh, it must be so hard to know they'll all die because of you. So tragic. It must be tearing you apart. <laughs> Don't fuck with me. There's no way an amateur like you could pull off a curse that strong. Unfortunately for you, I absolutely can. My curse stone is a particularly strong one, which means I can have my fun without needing to hold back one bit. It's almost like the Feast of Shadows was cast just for me. You're surprisingly well informed about this. Who was it that tipped you off? Hmm, who knows? Then how about I kill you myself first and ruin all your fun? What about that, asshole? Idiot. You think I'd call it off if, uh, just because you were dead? There's no running away for you. Urgh. I'll find you. I won't let you get away with this, Nijima. You've got 12 hours. 
Do you really think your paltry little organization will be able to make to make a dent in my plans? Oh, the sacrifices made will be heavy. I can't wait to see you sobbing with regret. <laughs> and I'll even have enough soul dregs to pull off the rite of resurrection. How splendid. Wait, Nejima, you're after the... Anyway, see you around. Bye-bye now. Boss? Ario, did you catch all that? Nejima, what is he planning? Who knows? For now, we need to find him and get him into custody. Send word to HQ. But the fact that the seven mysteries are wrapped up in this gun is going to make things tricky. You mean with Nejima being a curse bearer? Just our luck, really. It couldn't have been a worse guy. Sounds like his curse will be able to kill a lot of people at once. I like to avoid getting our investigators caught in the crossfire. We'll use them to find out where he is, but then we're going in alone. We should try to collect as many curse stones as we can before then. Let's hurry. Aye, aye, boss. Later. It was reported that a total of three suspicious deaths were discovered that night. Nijima's threats, along with the curses, were kept secret from the general public. However, the Hanjo serial killing still made international headlines following the death of police officer Hajime Yoshimi. Yoshimi. At Sitsumi's request, a large-scale investigation was launched into Fumichika Nijima's whereabouts. Sitsumi and Aryo themselves spent the rest of the night looking for the curse bearers in the area, but their search ended in vain. And with that, the curtain closed on that curse night. Twelve hours to sunset. Uh, Satsumi's Investigation. Complete the Satsumi branch of Chapter 1. Uh, bringing her friend back from the dead means she'll have to pay the price. Yako makes it home safely, but still isn't sure about how to proceed with her curse. She worries about Mio at the, as the night passes. Yako Sakazaki, 8 a.m. Yako's home. Oh, good morning, Yako. Huh? Yako, rise and shine. Uh, huh? You're up. Huh, it's morning. Um, I... Are you okay? Can you remember your name? Uh, duh. Yes, yes, I'm the specter of the spirit board. No, no, don't fall back asleep. You must still be drinking. Dreaming, wake up. Yes, I'm Yako Sakazaki. Ah, good. Oh, Mio, thanks for last night. Was everything okay? Yep, still alive. I couldn't dispel the curse echo or learn the identity of who used it, but I managed to at least get away. But in that situation, it's the best you can hope for. Sorry I got you involved in something so dangerous. I meant to look for you as soon as the sun rose, but I was just so sleepy. Can't even remember when I fell asleep. It's okay. It's only natural to be exhausted after what you went through. Besides, I also feel bad that you've been wrapped up in all of this. It's supposed to be my job to prevent that from happening. Oh yeah, you said something about that last night. Just who are you exactly, Mio? Oh, well, I'm... The truth is, I've been trained in things having to do with the supernatural. Huh? You mean you can learn that kind of stuff like you would with the flower arranging? I had quite the eventful childhood. Huh. That sounds like it must have been tough. Yes, it would take a long time to explain, so let's leave it at that for now. As fate would have it, I've ended up as the apprentice, or maybe more like the assistant, to a notable paranormal expert. Schools have always had more paranormal disturbances because young people tend to be more susceptible to these things. I'm sent to schools that may experience something paranormal and put a stop to it before it happens. Wow, that's amazing. So it's like being a, uh, it's like a part-time job you do while also being a student. Well, I do help maintain public order, but it's all part of my training, so I don't get any money. Oh, you've got it rough then. But still, that's really, that really is amazing. You were so cool when you faced off against the evil spirit. I never know if, some, if I should be happy when you compliment me like that. But anyways, that's why it's up to me to resolve any paranormal issues at the school. And why I'm going to look into the cause of all this. But for now, let's head back to school. Yeah. Oh, do you have your curse stone? Now that it's daytime and its power is diminished, I should be able to hold on to it. Want to give it a try? Right, I do, I do have it, but... Yako. Is it really so wrong, trying to bring Michio back, I mean? I can't approve of it. 
The right may seem like a dream come true, but if it involves taking the lives of other people, then... Yeah, true. I want to make sure this whole ritual ends without anyone getting hurt. That's what I believe, and what I'll put before anything else. I'm so sorry, but is it okay if I hold on to it? Yako. I promise I won't use the curse, no matter what. But maybe there's some other way. I have I just have this feeling that I shouldn't give up on the possibility just yet. That said, I'll help you, even if it's to stop the curses. For the Michio that still exists within me, I'll settle things so that we can move forward. Okay, but if you ever feel it in in danger, you can give me the curse stone at any point. Right. Thank you, Mio. Okay then, let's go. Candy Shop Sonoya. An old-fashioned candy shop located on a street corner in Hanjo. It has been the Yako Sakazaki's family for three generations. On the weekends, you can spot Yako watching over the store, cooking manjayaki, uh, and playing traditional tops and card games with local children. Uh, though traditional candy shops are known for selling cheap treats for kids, it is not uncommon to see these largely privately owned businesses becoming something more like general stores, selling food, drinks, utensils, and other daily necessities. Many families operate candy shops on the dirt ground floor of their home, known as Doma, with a space in the back where customers can eat manjayaki, as well as arcade games and capsule toy machines in the front. Such facilities make them attractive places for children to gather and play. However, the harsh reality is that the traditional candy shops, which thrive during the period of high economic growth, when many confectionery manufacturers entered the market, are experiencing a steady decline due to the rise of convenience stores and changes in children's interests and tastes. Yako Sakazaki. 8 a.m. Kamigata High School, front gates. Huh. I thought it un unusually noisy. There's a big group of people and police in front of the school. Did something happen? If the police are here, then something must have. I'll go ask. Thanks. This isn't good. Huh? What happened? Um, don't panic, okay? The first teacher who came to work this morning found something. Okay. Mr. Jono Uchi was found dead in the middle of the school grounds. What? They're closing the school for the day. But that's not all. I didn't know this either since it didn't watch it the, the morning news, but rumors are spreading that a number of bodies are found nearby. What? There's no way. Why? Could it be because of the curse? We don't know enough to say. From what I heard, Mr. Jono Uchi's body was in the middle of the grounds, but his body was covered in bruises like he'd fallen from somewhere high. Weird. Taking into account his unnatural death and the timing, it's very li likely it has something to do with the curse. You're saying someone used their curse on him last night. Seems like it, doesn't it? But that's so scary. Yeesh, so the curses really do kill people. And someone used it. Shh, keep your voice down, okay? What would happen if another curse bearer heard you? Eep, sorry. Uh, Kohei Juno, Juno Uchi. Uh, Kohei never aspired to be... No. His deceased body was discovered on the school grounds at dawn. Was this... No. Where's the school girl? Is it Hitomi? 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 Uh, Hitomi killed Michio and... Uh... Oh, hey. I wish we had a little more information, but they've locked up the front gate. Maybe we could sneak in through the back entrance. Hmm. That person over there. Isn't that Hitomi Okuda? You're right, that's unusual. Oh, but uh, she was at school last night, too. She must know something about Mr. Jono Uchi. Let's see what she has to say. Oh, Mio, wait for me. Huh. So you're telling me the two of you were at the ones at the school last night? No sense hiding it, then. Plus, I owe you one, Mio. I'll tell you everything I know. Thank you. She owes you? Oh, um, yeah. Right after I transferred here, there was a bit of trouble. She gave me one of those, uh, what was it? Oh, uh, exorcisms. Huh, so that's what that was. Uh, Jono Uchi's death. 
Did you hear about Mr. Jonouchi? Heard about it? I've known about it since last night. I saw that asshole bite it on the school grounds myself. What? You saw it happen? Tell us about it. What happened exactly? Don't really know myself. It was pitch black. What I can tell you... It was almost dawn, probably around three. He started freaking out all of a sudden, ran out onto the ground like something was chasing him, then screamed. Ah! Somebody help me! Forgive me, Michio! Or something like that while he was running around. Michio? He never mentioned- he mentioned Michio? Was there anyone else out on the grounds? It was too dark to see from where I was, but for just a second I think I saw a girl in a school uniform with hair, her hair in braids. Oh! I didn't go out to make sure, so it could have been nothing for all I know. Then I heard him begging for his life, like, I was wrong, and I'll do anything. Then all of a sudden his arms and legs snapped, even though he was just standing there. His arms and legs broke without him, uh, without anything being done to him. He fell over and quit moving, so I thought I'd better get out of there. Then he croaked. That's all I saw. I see. But from what you've told us, it almost sounds like Michio's ghost chased down Mr. Jonouchi and killed him. How if I know anything about that? I'm just telling you what I, s I heard him say. Did you tell the story to the police? Nope. And I ain't gonna. Can't count on them for shit. Not like they'd believe such an insane story anyways. Right. But there must be at least one person in the police worth trusting, right? Yeah, I guess. There was this one cop who always got in my case about stuff. But he died just the other day. Oh, he did? I'm sorry to hear that. Everyone who gets involved with me ends up dead. Maybe I really am cursed. Piss me off. You got it all wrong. The spirit that possessed you wasn't that kind of spirit. Huh? It wasn't? Yeah. Uh, uh, this was just an unfortunate coincidence. Though I I'm sure that was hard enough for you. That's all I know about that asshole's death. Hey Mio, I've been thinking something. Hmm. The way she described it reminded me of something. The way Mr. Jonoichi died, it sounds a lot like how Mich Michio died. Of course, I didn't see it myself, but the state Michio's body was in. It was like she had fallen from high up. Could they have been killed by the same curse? I don't think so. The curses of the Sun Mysteries hadn't manifested when she died. And if we can trust what the spirit board said, then Michio died in an accident. Oh, right. Uh, Hitomi, were you possessed by some kind of evil spirit? I don't understand it all too well myself. What I can say for sure is... Thanks to Mio, the weird symptoms that were happening to me all went away. Yep. Some people are born with a natural sensitivity to the paranormal. They tend to end up isolated as they struggle to relate to the people around them. They also tend to draw spirits to them naturally. This can cause strange symptoms they don't understand, like headaches, muscle stiffness, and hallucinations. Even memory problems. I'm sure it must have been very hard. So that's how it works, huh? Do people also have uh, their personality taken over when possessed too? Hmm. It's possible with spirits who have a very close relationship with their target, like siblings or a parent and child. But you almost never hear about people being taken over completely. It's when the two parties aren't in sync that those negative effects can start to appear. So the seances, or whatever you see on TV, are all bogus? Not quite. There are mediums and diviners who can align their minds with the spirits they call. Though there are people on TV who are just putting on a performance. Huh. There are people who in, de in life had extremely powerful spirit sense or a deep connection with the person, but even they shouldn't be able to uh, completely take over the person they possess. And even if they could, it would only be enough to pressure them to choose certain behaviors that wouldn't be unusual for them to do on their own to begin with. Hmm, but if that's the case, wouldn't you not know if you were choosing that behavior of your own will or not? Hence why there are a lot of cases where police don't even realize they're possessed, or where people don't even realize they're possessed. Though the spirit may influence the behavior and memories of the host, the deeper their connection in life, the easier it is for that to occur. I see. Getting possessed by a spirit is pretty complicated, huh? It must have been tough for you being so uh, possessed for so long, you tell me. Hmm. <laughs> Whatever might happen to me doesn't make any difference. Me being able to see spirits and stuff has nothing to do with how things ended up like this. Yeah, and I'm not being able... And I'm not... Uh, it's not like being able to see them is your fault either. The same goes for me. Maybe it's just something we have to live with. I think you have a knack for it yourself, Yako. I bet you could see them too with a little training. Uh, I think I may pass. So that's why you do the job you do, huh, Mia? 
I thought she was a weirdo when she showed up all of a sudden saying she was going to exercise me. If you hadn't said anything, I probably would have knocked your lights out. You tried to perform an exorcism on her without telling her anything? Er, you see, in my experience, most people don't understand, no matter how much I explain. They only accept my explanation after they see the results. Huh, I guess that makes sense. Hey, tell me, last night before you, was, you witnessed Mr. Jono Uchi collapse, can I ask what he uh, and you were doing in the classroom? You gonna tell the cops? Oh, right, with everything that happened with Mr. Jono Uchi, Jono Uchi, they'll suspect you if we told them we saw you with him that night. Anytime something happens with someone like me, all those shitty adults start jumping to conclusions. I understand. I won't tell them. You wouldn't have been able to kill him anyway. If you say so, then I don't mind telling you about it. So last night, that piece of shit, Jono Uchi, called me over here, acting like he was going to attack me or something. What? How terrible. Whatever. I'm glad he's dead. He had it coming. Calling people worthless and a cancer on society when he doesn't know shit about them. That asshole was, at, uh, was the one always acting like scum, if you ask me. Is that so? Could you tell us in more detail why he called you out in the middle of the night? Mm, it's hard to explain. Where to start? What did you mean by M Mr. Jono Ichi acting like scum? Was he doing something bad? You know uh, Michio Shira Ishi, right? The girl who killed herself? Huh? Michio? I don't know everything, but that creep of a teacher had some dirt on her, and he was using it to blackmail her, call her up after school, and make her do whatever he wanted. What? W what do you mean when you say whatever he wanted? I'll leave it to your imagination. Nothing that a couple model students like you would ever get involved in. No way, that's... How? What do you mean by dirt? I don't know anything about this. How could I not have known about this? Yako, I don't know how... Uh, I know how you feel, but try to calm down. You got guts acting like you were a friend. Jono Uchi really did a number on both Michio's body and soul. She probably felt she couldn't tell anyone, like she had to suffer alone. No! How terrible! Hitomi, how do you know about this? I just happened to walk in on it. I know the spots around the school people go to when they want to stay out of sight. He ran off in a public... Uh, he ran off in a panic when I yelled at him, uh, asking what he was doing. Walked in on it. I couldn't just leave her alone, looking like she was about to cry, so I stuck around for a bit. She told me everything that happened in whispers. She probably figured it w I wasn't the type to spread that stuff around, but she never asked for my help. She told me that she was fine and to keep it a secret. Michio, why? She probably thought she just had to grit her teeth till it was through. She was naive. I tried to tell her that if uh, you give guys like that an inch, they'll take a mile. She kept saying about how it was her punishment. She was soft. No. Of course, Jono Uchi didn't change. He kept on doing what he was doing. I don't understand either of them, but that's how, as much as I was involved. And then she killed herself. Nothing I can do about it now. He told me if you knew about it, then why didn't you? I'm trying to say it's my fault. She told me not to say anything. She told me was, uh, she was fine. So what the hell uh, more responsibility do I have other than what I already did? Yako, there's no point in blaming Hitomi. Michio, why? Did you hear what this dirt was? Nope, never heard what it was. But for the sound of it, he'd been blackmailing her since about a year ago. For that long? The dick probably caught her doing something she shouldn't have been. She looked well behaved, but there's more to a person than meets the eye, you know. There must be some reason. Don't know, got nothing to do with me. So, last night, how did it start? All right. Remember that nosy cop I mentioned who was always on my case? He died at the former Yasuda Gardens a couple of days ago. Excuse me. Yoshimo was his name. He was part of the juvenile division. He didn't look like a cop at all, real rough guy, but good at looking out for folks, so he was the only one I could talk to. Huh, so there was someone like that with the police. Too bad he ended up dying. Uh, oh, another thing. One time he suddenly introduced his fiance to me. It was hilarious seeing a big guy like that act a little, like a shy little kid all of a sudden. She told me that she was like me when she was my age and that she was on my side. It must have been a terrible loss for her, too. Yeah, I do feel a little bad for her when I think about how sad she must be. And I... I saw him at the gardens the night he died. Oh, no. 
Whenever I would get worked up over something, Yoshimi, uh, Yoshimi always took me straight to that park. Then he'd listen to whatever I, uh, it was I was pissed off about. That day, he called me over there, like usual. But something seemed off about him, like he was worried about something. Worried about something? Yeah, he asked me for a favor, too. That was pretty unusual. A favor? What kind of favor? He handed me this weird talisman and asked me to hold on to it for him. A talisman? Yeah, just a normal good luck charm. I figured if that's it, then sure, I'll take it. I have it with me now. But that wasn't all. Then he told me that he wanted me to look for a talisman Michio Shura Ishii had that looked like this one. Huh? Michio? What does she have to do with this? Yoshimi had been meeting up and talking with her. While they were together, he noticed that she had like a special talisman or something. But apparently, Michio always avoided the subject. Talisman that Michio had. He knew that I knew her, so that's why he asked me. He said, Could there have been something that Michio couldn't tell the, uh, even the police about? I know things at home are a little complicated. From what I heard, Michio was keeping her mouth shut about what Jono Uchi was doing to her. Hard to talk with the cops when someone's got dirt on you. And I didn't squeal on anything about uh, Michio either. Michio, what is it that had such a strong grip on you? So basically, Yoshimi didn't just have his eyes on Michio, but her talisman too. But after she died, he didn't know where it ended up. So since I knew her from school, he wanted me to look into it for him. Is there something special about the two talismans? I wonder why he gave it to you. Hell if I know. When I looked inside it, uh, there's just a weird kind of grimy scrap of wood. So you've seen inside of it? But from the way he was acting, it seemed important to him somehow. But to be honest, what he was asking is such a pain in the ass, I figured he had to be serious about it. Oh, and since he died right after that. Yeah, he even said to me, if anything happens to me, take those two talismans. Give them to a guy named Naka Goshi at the police department. Knowing what I know now, he probably felt that something was going to happen to him. Hmm? Naka Goshi? Hmm, do you know him, Mio? No, I've just heard the name, I think. So there really is a Naka Goshi, that's a relief, at least. Anyway, it didn't feel right just ignoring a uh, dead guy's last request. Hitomi. Yeah? That talisman, would you mind if I had a look at it? Sorry, but I don't trust you all that much yet. It's important to me. No, oh, okay. So last night you were looking for the talisman Michio had. Yeah. And I figured that piece of garbage teacher would know the most about Michio. I asked him yesterday afternoon if he knew anything about her talisman. He gave me some cryptic response like, I can't talk about it now. Come to the school tonight. He even gave me the code to lo uh, lock on the back entrance. He seemed pretty willing to give it out, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's used it for secret me meetings before. Yuck. I can only imagine. We climbed over the front gate to get in. So yeah, we met up in the classrooms in the middle of the night. But nothing he said made any sense. Like, that I was really Michio and stuff like that. He went on and on about how it was my fault and that if only I hadn't been around or something. He grabbed a hold of me, breathing heavily. Eep! Were you okay? Yeah, that's right when you two showed up. I was able to get away while Jono, Jono Uchi was freaking out. Oh my gosh, good thing you got away. So, it's really all thanks to you two that I got away. But I didn't get any info about the talisman, so the whole thing was sort of a bust. Afterward, I was wondering what you two were up to, so I hid nearby. Then I saw you and the old man, uh, Ashimaya talking, and then Mio showed up. Oh, you did? That's also why I saw Jono Uchi come back outside and bite it. I see. So you were only here to look for Michio's talisman. I was dumb to fall for that creep Jono Uchi's uh, trap so easily. Could have gone a lot worse, but I lucked out. What you described does sound like Michio killed Mr. Jono Uchi. Uh, she did have reason to hate him after all. No way, you mean that was really was her ghost? Like, for real? Those who die bearing strong resentment or regret can occasionally become spirits, either bound to a place or roaming freely. However, it'd usually be impossible for them to kill the living. Most don't have that kind of power. But it's, it's possible they could possess someone close to them to act on those lingering regrets. Huh. Wonder if that's what happened. Alright then, supposing what the spirit board said is true and Michio's death was an accident. Then she must have had some regrets. She really hadn't given up on the living, that is. I don't think she was the kind of girl who would just give up no matter what the situation. I don't really know, but she didn't seem like she had something tormenting her so much as uh, that she'd kill herself. Hmm. 
And that's all I know. Happy? I still gotta look for the talisman. Sure, thank you, Otomi. Oh, if you two find out anything about Michio's talisman, I'll be sure to let you know. Thanks. Oh, can we get your contact info? Where can we normally find you? Right, I'm not home yet, uh, most of the time. Usually I'm at a friend's place. Here's the phone number. Thanks. We'll call you if we need to talk. And, um, what is it? You're easier to talk to than I imagined. I was kind of scared at first, but not anymore. Shut up. You were the one avoiding me. Anyway, catch you later. And don't die out there, okay? Thanks. We'll be careful. Alright then. We got a lot of new information. Sounds like Mr. Jono Uchi was killed by a curse, just as we thought. Which means there was a curse bearer at the school. Multiple, in fact. Multiple? You think so? Yes, the curse echo we experienced at the school, and the one that killed Mr. Jono Uchi seemed to be different. The people in the school at the time other than us were... Mr. Jono Uchi, Hitomi, and old man Eshimaya, who you ran into. I was thinking it would be among them, but... But there was one more person. Hitomi saw a girl in a school uniform with braids. From what Hitomi was saying, it doesn't seem like she's the one. Uh, Mr. Jun Jono Uchi was pretty sp suspicious, though. If he were a curse bearer, it would certainly explain why he was killed. Right, that's why I say there were multiple. All right, the person who killed Mr. Jono Uchi would have to be one, too. Which means it must be either the mysterious girl or old man Ashimaya. Yeah, we should certainly be careful of them. That said, the mysterious girl and the fact that Mr. Jono Uchi thought it was Michio that was attacking him has me wondering. Of course, I doubt Michio herself was actually there, but... Oh, I just remembered. I also saw Mr. Ara Ishii outside the main gate last night. He did? It's likely he's involved with the curses, given that he's the one doing research on the Rite of Resurrection. So, we'll have to be careful of old man Ashimaya and Mr. Arashi, Ara Ishii. I want to believe that not all curse bearers will be hostile, but... As for what to do now, I'd like to find who is responsible for the Feast of Shadows that set this off and how they did it. I don't think we'll be able to end this without stopping it at its source. Huh, that makes sense. In which case, next we should do what exactly? We'll need to talk with Mr. Arishi, and d he definitely knows something. It should be safer during the day, so I think we should try to look for him. Got it. I'll help in any way I can. But the school is closed. I wonder where he could be. Let's try heading someplace someone... Uh, let's try... It heading someplace someone may, may know where he is. Huh, where to go then? Um And so, Mio Kurozu, uh, Kurosuzu and Yako Sakazaki decide on their lo next location to investigate. Alright. Um, it is getting late. I'm going to cut the video there and go get dinner. Thank you all for uh, joining me for another night of Strange and Scary Games. I love you all. We'll see you in the next video.